hey, thanks for coming. How are you? Yeah, this is uh, 25 months of van- of uh, story of the storyteller's fault. <laughs> Nate and Ian. Yeah. Um, now, now we're going to be snipey and crude and offend you. So, oh, stay I, I have that '90s edgy humor packed and ready to go like a six shooter. That's good. That's good. So, um, today we'll talk about um, one of the earliest books to be uploaded onto the Storyteller's Vault. And if anyone doesn't know, the Storyteller's Vault, storytellersvault.com, is a place where people can write. Uh, World of Darkness content and upload it to this website and also to drive through RPG and sell it. Uh, you get 50%, which is actually a really good deal when you're dealing with other people's IP like D&D. You actually get less, so it's a pretty good deal. And um, there's a great community of people doing it. So this was one of the first ones that was uploaded. This is Clan Book Gargoyle. And the Gargoyles to me were always one of the most fascinating bloodlines, but also there was just not a lot on them. There's not a lot of canonical gargoyle-ness. And not, a lot of, not a lot of lore in the background yeah. about no, them. Like, to pause on that for a minute, had the gargoyles ever done anything in the meta plot that was important? Like, you know, a Samadhi, a Baron Samadhi, delivered the soul of Cappadocius to the Giovanni. That's important. Okay, so the Samadhi did something. Did the gargoyles ever do anything? I don't think so. I no. Think I have I have strong opinions about this. Um, before we get into like talking about about the book, this is actually one of my big gripes with the gargoyle. Not 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 with like White Wolf or the original creators of the material. Honestly, it's been one of my gripes. Just like as a player and storyteller, the gargoyles are boring in my opinion. That's that's just my opinion. I don't I don't like them. I don't think that they're worthy of a full length clan book. And I just felt like they really only added like they, they add an element of personal horror. However, I think that the gargoyle bloodline in and of itself are not entertaining. I think that they're boring. So that's part of the reason why I was hesitant to even get into this because I was like, do they need a, 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 a write up? I know a lot of people are going to be like, you Nate, that's okay. You know, that's why that there's like 13 clans and, a whole host of bloodlines. You find the ones you like and you go with those. So that's just my opinion. How dare you have an opinion? It's stupid of me. I know. <laughs> Opinions. Oh, uh, I don't necessarily disagree with where you're coming from. I think when I first saw them in the 90s in what? Uh, Chicago by Night Tui? Something like that? Yeah, uh, I believe that there there is, uh, there is one in that book, yeah. I think that was the first appearance. Um, I was 14, 13, unashamedly watching the Gargoyle cartoon on (laughs) television, you know, and I felt like they were capitalizing on a cartoon and it was a little cheesy. And even at 13, I was like, "Mm." Um, and then, as I said earlier, I don't think that they're integral to the mega, the mega plot, uh, the (laughs) meta plot. Um, So I don't really think about them much. Um, I've often thought about them sort of in the same way I think about the Vizoid, the War Goals. I see them as sort of NPCs uh, that you would fight before you got to a big bad. When I saw that there was a clan book gargoyle, I didn't have that reaction that you describe, but I can put myself in those shoes and immediately understand why someone would think that. They'd say, well, that's just dumb. This is probably, dare I say, fanfic. If there's one thing I've learned about the Storyteller's Vault, it's not fanfic. It's extremely well done, and this is no exception. So I wrote Clan Book Kiasid, and when I got my first few sales, this is what I bought. And I was really not disappointed at all, but I also saw in it a lot of the flaws that I think people would attribute to fan-created material. Uh, I don't think it had the best editing. I don't think it had the best layout. I really didn't like the art choices. There wasn't any. (laughs) There's, yeah. The aesthetics aesthetics of it suffered from being um, a very early book. There weren't very many art packs released on the Storyteller's Vault at the time. An art pack on the vault is a downloadable uh, 
folder of free art digitized from early White Wolf publications. Um, so there was art available for free to him for him to use that had gargoyles in it, but there wasn't that much. And so the, the mainly the cover art suffered greatly. Uh, it's pixelated. There are page after page of just te- solid blocks of text. The text isn't formatted to look exactly like it would be if it was a, an official canonical clan book, uh, which is a little jarring. Right. Um, but once you get past that and you actually just start reading the book, and especially if you're a little bold and you skip sections that you think go on and on because it, it has that problem too. I think, in my opinion, it did something that I I found very impressive. On first glance, like you said, I find the the, or the gargoyles to be mostly unplayable. NPCs, not particularly interesting for me, at least. And when I read about their meta plot, which is what you would expect, they were an enslaved a group and they had a break-off revolt that was somewhat successful, and some of the gargoyles were able to leave, um, thusly forming small communities around the world, right. um, centered around fairly charismatic, powerful gargoyles. For what it's worth, I didn't find that to be like a groundbreaking series of events. It's not like masterful plot. It is fairly, I mean... Kind of cause it's, it's straightforward. It's straightforward. It's straightforward. Um, but it does. It has every everything's there for you. The the names of all the vampires are there. The history is all there. It's extremely detailed. In my opinion, it actually goes on maybe too long. And it's a hundred and fifty five page right. book, making it the longest plan book ever written. Ever. It's not particularly expensive. I think it's eight dollars or something. So as far as the vault is concerned, it's I think you get twenty pages for a dollar or something. So it's you know when you do the math. So it's a pretty cheap book, um, dollars per page. It's um, a huge, it is a tremendous value if you are the type of, of buyer that wants n- new stuff, wants like actual stuff, you know, powers and yeah, paths and cool et cetera, stuff. et cetera. Yeah, it's, it's a tremendous value if, if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for a robust book, it's that. Yeah, I, I think that it's one of the best books on the vault for – storytellers of all authors to read. I think if you are a consumer first, or if you're strictly a consumer and you're not looking to create books, you might find this one to ramble a little bit. You might find the formatting a little frustrating. You might find the lack of art disappointing. But what you'll have is a playable bloodline that has intricate meta plot, tons of discipline options, arguably too many. Yeah. Yeah, it has all the things that a clan book has, and it has them in spades, and sometimes in sort of a frustrating way. It's like a bag of holding. You're just, like, dumping it out. You're like, is this thing still full? What the hell? You do get, like, organization. You know, they have their own mm-hmm. gargoyle society that uh, is detailed, you know, to the umpteenth power. They have uh, an expansion on Viscaratica, or however you pronounce their discipline. He gives it the really hilarious name, lithiomancy which would be the magic of stones which is utterly fascinating he does a great job with those disciplines but it just goes on and on and on it's kind of like difficult to read them all one of the more interesting aspects that he created was they the gargoyles interact with their haven and can like sort of stone craft and uh meld with their with their haven which i think is fascinating and it's an interesting aspect of the playable character where you can have like a like a really crazy haven which yeah as the author of clan book kiasid the, the kiasid do something similar they have a, a stonecraft ability and often live underground so i saw a lot of parallels between the kiasid and the gargoyle which i would never have thought and now have like this burning desire to run a, a game with only these like obscure bloodlines like Kiasid and Gargoyle and Samadhi. Yeah. I think it would be great. I think you could also even branch off and make your own IP with that because these are all so different. There's, there's just a lot of a lot of very cool stuff happens when you have such a different bloodline. They do have some things I don't really like, but the way that he incorporates, uh, like he talks about the ghouls, 
It's actually written by two guys. It's written by Sam Myatt and um, Ben. Uh, I forget Ben's last name, but both were great guys. Ben is one of my writers for uh, Tri Book Black Spiral Dancer. Great guy. But they he made it so ghouls of the gargoyles like turn to stone after a while. So it's a, it's a little funky. It's kind of in the same vein as um, a Nosferatu or a Samadhi ghoul. Yeah. Like, so it's kind of consistent with like a 20th anniversary edition kind of scenario because um, depending on the version of the game that you're playing first, second, third, you know, revised V20, ghouls kind of do a little bit different, but traditionally it's always been like over time, your retainers tend to, or your, your ghouls specifically tend to take on aspects of the blood. You know, Nosferatu ghouls get a little bit more ugly and Bruja ghouls get a little bit more prone to frenzy, et cetera, et cetera. And consistent with, with the Sam and Ben show, I think they go a little overboard with it, but it's there. It's totally interesting. <laughs> he has like chapter and chapter and chapter, uh, you know, things goes on and on. The other thing I found really fascinating, he even talked about ghouled animals. It has like a whole section on ghouled animals. It's crazy. He addresses created versus embraced gargoyles and goes all into that. There's a Nosferatu gargoyle versus just embraced as a gargoyle. They're different and have different disciplines interesting but it's like okay wow i still have to read all this stuff like right goes on and on, and on. they, they kind of take the 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 meta plot of the the origins of the gargoyles you know the ritual where they're sort of birthed created and kind of bring it back and, and extrapolate on it a little bit more I, i'll tell you this much as far as the research is concerned you know they went through every single book <laughs> where the gargoyles are mentioned and they really did kind of like a full circle retelling, brought everything that they found everywhere into this book. And that, that's really why it's so long, because they did basically address every single point where the gargoyles are even mentioned, you know, from the Dark Ages books to the modern day books to, you know, the like Children of the Night type books. It's everything that's ever mentioned. They codified and wrote and and turned into a thing that's published now. Personally, I think that if you, it, look, if you like gargoyles and you were like, man, I wonder what that would be like. I wish I had all this in a book. Here you go. There you, it's, it's all for you, but it is a little long winded. <laughs> it is a little, it is a little much because not only did they, they include all of that stuff, but they expanded well beyond the, what's been, what's been written about the gargoyles to the point, like where you were talking about, like the, their thaumaturgy and all of that stuff. Like there's so many different powers in here. It's a great exercise of imagination and I'll give them credit for that, but it's a little too much for my tastes. It's just a little, I had to, I had to stop and jump around in certain places. Cause I was just like, that's, that's enough powers for me. Simmer down buddy. <laughs> right. <laughs> I will, I will give it credit for this. It seems fairly balanced. Like there isn't anything in there where I'm like, okay, now gargoyles are ridiculous. Right. Right. So, you know, they have that going for them. And like I said, it's it's a lot of pages and it's mostly all text. So if you ever wanted to extrapolate on the gargoyles to the logical conclusion, you're going to find it in this book. I disagree a little bit, but I mostly agree. I, I think that if White Wolf did, if, if somebody broke into Justin Achilles' house, put a gun to his head, and said, you have to make a clan book gargoyle right now. <laughs> um, this is pretty much what they would write. But I, I think it, ha it would have to be a gun to the head sort of situation because, like you said, it's much longer than it's supposed to be. I think it's a great book, and I think it doesn't make any sales anymore because nobody knows about it, and he doesn't uh, advert they don't advertise it. Um, so that's kind of the number one reason why I wanted to pick it to do first was so people just knew that it existed. Yeah. Um, and I would just reiterate that it's not perfect. It's one of the earliest storytellers of all books ever written. And it suffers from that. But if you're interested in expanding the world that you play in, I think this is mostly useful for storytellers, honestly. Um, there's, there's nothing stopping you from making this uh, storyteller's guide to gargoyles. Right and making these just really fleshed out NPCs. And for that reason, it, and it is very cheap. And for that reason, I highly recommend it. Even if you're not ever planning on playing one of these things, I think it's valuable in your library 
if you're a storyteller. For as much as I like, you know, um, Lore of the Clans and Lore of the Bloodlines, I, I wish that they were clan books, but I know the business behind clan books and I know why they're not. And they're, wait, wait, what? The, the business, the reason why we'll never see clan books again. The, the business why behind, because they don't sell. And this has been confirmed for me on a number of occasions by many people in the business. It turns out the only books that sell well from a clan book perspective are the more well-known and popular clans. So like your Malkavian clan book or your Bruja clan book or your Venture clan book, I'm just picking at random. Those might be very good sellers, but each one that comes after it, each more obscure clan sells worse and worse to the point where the most obscure clans sell the poorest because nobody knows about them. Throughout the history of White Wolf, throughout the history of the World of Darkness, the more obscure the material, the less the book sells. That's just why you won't see them. That's why you have in Dark Ages, you, you had your Salubri and your Cappadocian and your Bali clan book. But once the, the new version of Dark Ages came out, the second, you know, Dark Ages vampire, they didn't do clan books again. They just did chunks. They did big, you know, high clans and low clans. That's it. They just don't sell well otherwise. The, the main thing with the Storyteller's Vault is people think it's fanfic. Like, you know, in the 90s, you'd go on to some Star Wars, yeah. uh, you know, uh, pin board, it, yeah, and, right. board yeah, and just be like, crap. There is some of that, but you can tell the kind of person that invests in the layout and the editing uh, and the cover will almost certainly have invested in good writing. So the way that I pick these is I there's a preview section when you go onto the vault and you see a title that you like, you click on it, you can get a preview. The previews are usually six to nine pages, and you can almost always uh, get the first few pages of the actual book. You know, you get past the publication page and the table of contents and whatever, and then you get a page or two of the actual work. And you can tell pretty much right away from the first sentence whether it's written by, you know, a high school student or somebody that actually really likes the material and has, like, edited and thought about it and meditated on it. And in that way, I think that most of the books are, it's like you said, like maybe you could come up with this stuff on your own. Sure. I'm not saying you're not a creative person, Mm -hmm. but whoever wrote, I mean, Ben and Sam, who wrote Clan Book Gargoyle, spent a lot longer than you would probably spend. So whatever you might come up with, um, they probably thought about that and it's probably in there. Uh, and you might want to go a different direction with it and then whatever and go a different direction, but the disciplines are still there. Right. You know, right. they're all, there's a whole new, uh, metric they have called abhorrence for like how ugly they are, which is really, really fascinating. And I'll, uh, like everything else they do goes on too long. I really don't think it's one of those things that you can, that any storyteller or any player should discount, even if it's obvious that it's lacking in some way, like the art sucks or the editing's not great. A lot of these are very well done. And that's what I'm hoping to do with this podcast is that we can point to specific publications that are non-canonical, yeah. but they should be in your library nonetheless. This could be a substantial game in and of itself. It could be another mummy, the resurrection or whatever. So I, I think for that in and of itself, it's a valuable purchase. Like just play a gargoyle game, use this book as your foundation and use your vampire book to make a character. The one thing that you mentioned, you know, about trying to get people to raise awareness about Storyteller's Vault is, you know, we we made kind of, a, I think, a mutual promise to one another that, you know, we're only going to be doing reviews of things on this show that we feel people should add to their library. We're only going to talk about ones we like that we suggest you get. And so if you see it on here, spoiler, you already know. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for us uh, as far as what we can do to make this interesting, entertaining, a good show, let us know and we'll see you next episode.